What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company. Pushing pause on the jigs just for the next couple videos. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and I was looking at a couple different spinner baits and I got these a couple weeks ago. I'm a huge fan, you can't really, there we go. I'm a huge fan of these double bladed, I mean it's like a spinner bait, but they run together. I, don't, I mean, these are from Lure Parts Online. This is a twin spin spinner bait. <clears throat> this is 3 8 ounce jet black with hologram, so it's got a little uh, glitter in there. But if you want to see, so I don't I, like, I've called these double blades, I've called them, you can call them whatever you want. I've been throwing these for a long time. <clears throat> Actually, the first musky over 40 inches that I ever caught was on this little double right here. And it, what's cool about this one is the arms are separate. It was, it's pretty intricately wrapped in here. I stole this when my grandpa was still around. I stole this from him and put new blades on it. I found it at the bottom of his tackle box. I don't know how old this thing is. <clears throat> so you know that they've been throwing them a long time. And um, I don't know, this is probably 10 years ago that I caught, it was a tiger, but tiger muskie, but still. And I've just, ever since, I've just loved throwing these. So I thought, I've never tied one of these on a video before, and so I thought I would do that. And actually, just a little sneak peek, the next video I'm gonna do is gonna be kind of a one-up. So I've got here, this is a one ounce head. I think this is just a, this might be Northland or Cabela's brand, I can't remember. And just hand-tied, and actually, this was just a spinner bait, so you don't have to buy them. You can tell here, this is just crimped, so it was a spinner bait, and they just crimped on another wire, just put them next to each other. But if you have like .041, whatever, stainless steel wire, you can make your own. And I just put a little shrink tubing on the ones I do because I really don't like when they're super flimsy like this. Not all the time. And so I think the next video I'm gonna do is this big musky one. It's gonna be a long video. I might actually break it up into tying and making this because it is kind of a lot. But yeah, just a little sneak peek. It might be similar to this one in colors. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm first gonna put down a little bit of craft fur and then I've got four, well I've got two slopping feathers, but these are rounded. You can see that they're rounded. I don't necessarily like that on the very tip of my bait. So then I got two just strung saddle feathers that are really webby and thick. And I'm gonna put these on after I put the other two on. And then I've just got a couple stacks of deer hair and some flash, so it's just gonna be a pretty straightforward, no dubbing loops, no, really not a lot of the synthetic stuff, but um, it's really gonna be annoying to tie on this, especially with these two. So what I was, what I kind of thought of is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a little split ring. This is actually the swivel and split ring that are gonna go on here when I bend it. But if I push these together, and I feed that split ring in. You wanna go far enough up where it's not gonna shoot out, but at least I don't have to worry about going around two wires. And I apologize, in this video you'll hear probably a lot of me hitting this constantly. Uh, there's just not really much you can do. It's super annoying to tie on spinner baits, but it's, it's worth it. So what I'm gonna do first is I've just got a little bit of craft fur. This is 210 Danville. This is Flymaster Plus. I'm gonna get my craft fur, and I've already got it ready. I'm gonna put that down first just to add a little bit. These feathers, when they get wet, really compress down, and I just wanna make sure that the back of this bait isn't going to be too small, uh, too thin. 
So I'm just gonna push that around. I'm not really worried about the feathers fouling around the hook or anything. I mean, it will happen, and but this isn't the primary reason for this. Because this bait, I mean, it's gonna spin, it's gonna fish like this. And so, I just wanna make sure that I have coverage on this. It is currently blizzarding here after a warm winter. This is one of the first videos I've been able to do when it's light out. So I'll just get that pushed around. Then I'll get that down. You just kind of have to do really long wraps. I'm not going to put any glue down. I could. I'll put some glue down when I put my flash down. So now I've got two schloppens and I'm going to put those down first and I'm, these are going to be shorter just by about maybe not even half of an inch. I'm going to put these down first and I just want them to run as flat as I can. So I'll kind of actually if I get it straight, I'll get my thread on this side and I'll just pull on there just to make sure I don't want this to rotate or anything. I want it to be flat. I want that stem to be nice and flat. But really when it gets wet it won't matter much. So, so I'll get my second one. And these are already cut pretty much to length. Just want to try and make sure get a little loose over there and then I'll pull. Maybe I'll put a little glue down on these feathers too. These feathers are actually usually stronger than they look. Not that you'll be able to fish a whole summer with them, but they usually uh usually go pretty well and I know it looks huge but if you've ever tied with these feathers you know that they don't keep their they don't keep this bulk once they get wet so now I'll put on those these more pointed ones this is just the strung stuff and I'm just gonna have it go if you see I'm just gonna have it go it just barely goes past but that tip is what I want on the very end of my bait. Go a little bit farther. And the good thing about these feathers, you don't really build up that bulk. And I'll kind of talk about this head up here in just a sec, because you've heard me say it, sometimes tying on stuff like this that wasn't naturally meant to be tied on can be you gotta just think about it a little bit. So I'll push that up there. Get these on. This is a thicker stem on this one. And I'm doing a lot of tension on these wraps. I'm just trying to avoid, I already cut with some wire cutters, I cut these, so this is gonna be super sharp. So I probably would be able to cut my thread on it. But I'm not too worried about it. So, hopefully it runs, you want it just to run nice and straight, and then I can get down, I don't think I'm gonna quite, maybe I'll put a little flash now, and then I'll put some super glue down. So, super quick, I put this, these feathers and stuff, on the hook. And now I'm going to jump up here. I've already filed down these bait keepers, or whatever you want to call them. I already filed those down, but I'm not going to tie right on. You can, you might be able to see where it's just lead showing. That's where that little spike was. I'm not going to tie on that, just because eventually it's either going to slip that way, or it's going to slip back. That little hump, I'm going to just ignore it. Sometimes you, if you want to wrap chenille or something starting here and then you can wrap over the bump, but I usually just leave it free. 
So I'm going to put down just a little bit of, I've got holographic flash of blue. This is Lime Truce. It's a weird name, but I really like it. And it's just to add a little bit of color because this is going to be all black. So I want just a little bit of color in this bait. And what I'm going to do is remember this bait is going to swim like this. So anything you do, you just want to remember. And I'm not going to cut it and re do it. I'm just going to just going to go for it. Even if these will be a little bit longer, but that's okay. Pull those over, get a couple right close to the top. And then I can put some super glue down. I'm going to let it dry. And we'll start our bucktail. All right, glue's dry. Tinsel's down. This one just keeps wanting to hang out down there. So now I've got my black bucktail. This isn't like super primo stuff, but I'm going to go right behind this little lead bump and I'm just going to go, I don't know, at, it's a little over halfway probably down that feather. I want to leave definitely some room on that feather so it can move as much as it wants to without that bucktail kind of getting in the way of it. And so I'm going to make sure these are all flush. And you got to be careful. This is really thick with the lead. And so I'm going to need quite a bit of hair just to be able to push around it. I'm leaning on the light side, so there might be not necessarily gaps, but you'll be able to see through it most likely because I want it. I don't want this bait. I, this bait is going to be long, and so I don't want it to be long and big because this isn't necessarily going to be a musky bait. This is going to be, you can catch musky on a crappie minnow, but. <laughs> But uh, this is going to primarily be for bass, so I don't want anything just crazy big. And there shouldn't really be any flare in this one at all. Because this came from almost the very top of the tail, and that's typically where there's no trapped air in the hair. typically. So I'm going to just make sure, again, it's going to be thin. It's just the way I'm doing it. But I'll get that down. I'm not going to do the pinch and stuff like that. This is just going to be kind of a, a classic. Put it on, spin it around, tie it down. And my second one is going to go right up. So this is this is a skirt keeper, right? So this is where you would traditionally put the skirt. And then this little lead bump just keeps your skirt where you want it, so it's not always coming down. So I'm going to tie right up to that. So I'll have two stacks here. And then I'm just going to put one big one right up by the head. So I'll grab my second one that's probably about as thick. but about the same length, not a ton shorter. I'm going to go pretty darn close to the exact spot that I was, that I am, with the other one. I'm going to come all the way up, though, right to there. And then after I put this one down, I'm going to put tinsel on again just a little more flash. So I'm going to come right to there, get all that down, two wraps, spin it around. It's just a long way to spin when you have a thicker hook like this. So you really got to push it. 
And I don't think there's really going to be flare in this one either. We can see just a little bit. break my thread. So I'm going to get this down and then I'm actually going to trim these hairs that butt up to this bump because that's really, I don't know, you don't have to. I'm just thinking I'm gonna. So I'll get these trimmed. Actually, it might not take that long. Watch your thread. And then I'll put my tinsel down. But I'm really, every wrap that I'm putting down is really tight. I don't want this hair to slip. So you just make sure that your tinsel's tapered out. Even just a little bit of taper helps. And these are going to get caught. Just push those around and then I can start folding these ones on the other sides. Not worried about perfection here. Maybe I'll come back around. want to make sure they're down and then I'll put a little more super glue that should be good so I'm gonna put a little more super glue I'll let it dry and I'll see you up here all right glue's dry so the last one I'm gonna put is gonna be my shortest and thickest hair so, and it's gonna have the most flares because I cut it right from the, the bottom, or the base, I guess you'd probably call it. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna get it spun. I actually have a lot of flash in there. I don't know if you can see all that flash. I'm usually not a big flash guy, but in all black bait, put a little flash in there. So this is gonna be shortest, probably about right here, but I'm gonna go a little bit long on my hair I'm going to go right above my jig head and this is where it's a little bit tricky with that wire I'm going to pull a ton of flare that's all right, it'll mat down when it gets wet anyway. I'm gonna get this all happy and cozy. Around. And then I'm gonna actually pull down a little bit and make sure that I can get a little more flare out of it. Just want to make sure that it looks fairly even. There's a ton of hair on here anyway. You just don't, and it's not a fly, so you're not worried about one side having way more than the other and it's going to swim off or whatever. I'll grab these butts and I'll just flare it a little bit more. Comb it out there. 
that usually helps a little bit too. So now I'm going to get a bunch of good wraps working up towards my head. Really tight wraps. You can maybe see this bait kind of moving in a circle. On the last video, I was struggling with the head and I hit my thread and I had these wraps down and I just finished the bait. I didn't even have to worry about getting thread back down. Because if you put a good base layer down, you could almost just cut your thread and redo it. And it also helps the your materials, you know, just stay on too. But so it's going to be really tricky to see this because this is black on black. I'm going to get my razor blade and I'm going to push up against this flared hair by my head and then that'll create a nice little collar. Collar's done, ended up being a little big, which is okay. So what I'm going to show you now, this would be a finished bait, right? Well, I got to put these blades on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of my vise, and I've just got a pair of pliers, and I've already trimmed this down. This is just personal preference. What I kind of want is for my swivel and my blade to be right over my hook point. You can't, I don't know if you can see my hook point, but it's right here. I want it to be right over my hook point, so, and I want it to be as even as I can. So I'm gonna use my pliers kind of as a measuring tool too. So I'm gonna pinch right at where I clipped it. So it's almost flush on my bait this is going to be really hard for you to see, but, and that's where I'm going to bend it back. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push on it with my thumb, and I'm just going to rotate it as much as I can until it kind of touches where I am. And then I'm going to be able to straighten this out. And then I'll just pinch it down. So then I, now I'm going to be able just to pinch this like this and that blade will hold. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. They were at almost identical lengths and again I'm just going to make sure that it's pretty much flush with that. I'm going to hold it with my thumb. I'm going to push against my thumb and I'm going to go all the way around. It can be a little tricky. And I want them to be as close as I can. They don't have to be perfect. So I've got size four, number four, premium finish, just Colorado blades. The good thing about this is you can change them really whenever you want, just on the split ring. And so I thought about doing two chartreuse, willow blades, but again, you can just change them whenever you want. So I just went with a, the traditional silver so I'm going to get that on, just like this, and then anyone who's ever changed a spinner bait blade ever will know you just got to pinch that enough 
where the you're not going to cast it and you're, you watch your blade fly through the air. So that still probably isn't enough. You want it nice and tight on there so it'll swim just like this. Then I'll put that other one on. Just don't pinch your fingers. It's probably happened to a lot of you, but just got a little bit more. So again, I want these to be right over my hook point. This is a little bit short. You can definitely, on that musky one I showed you earlier, they definitely go back farther. And now I can just play with these. I can separate them more. I can put them together. Sometimes I like it if these blades actually, when they're spinning, they'll kind of hit each other and make some noise. But primarily, I'll just spread these out and it'll fish just like that. Um, I, again, I this is one of my favorite baits to throw anytime, anywhere. I have a little bias in it, but um, there you have it. Call these what you want, spinner baits, double spins, twin spins, whatever you want, but they're a classic. Junior's Fishing Company, juniorsfishing.com. See you soon.